Well, incredible indeed. And good afternoon. Welcome to Athens, Georgia, on an overcast Saturday. Still a beautiful day for college football. It's number three, Georgia battles Arkansas State. Well, plenty to talk about in this matchup, but there's been a bigger story surrounding this game, and it involves A State head coach Blake Anderson. Our thoughts and prayers are with everyone in the Red Wolves program after Blake lost his wife, Wendy, last month after a courageous two year battle with breast cancer. The two were married 27 years before her passing just 26 days ago, leaving behind three children, Colton, Kaysen, and Callie. After a leave of absence that spanned nearly three weeks, it's been an emotional week for Blake back in Jonesboro, also here in Athens. And no doubt those feelings are engulfing this great city today, highlighted by a grassroots movement to honor Wendy as Georgia fans have showed up in mass wearing pink this afternoon, the universal color to raise awareness for breast cancer. And with that, we welcome you to our broadcast position. Kelly Stoffer, Lauren Sisler on the sidelines. I am Roy Philpott and Kelly, needless to say, it has been a very emotional week. It really has incredibly emotional and Blake Anderson told us last night that his wife Wendy had to teach him that football is not life but football creates an incredible platform to celebrate the things that do matter in life and that's what this game is here today. Well said as we check in with Lauren. To this Arkansas State, Arkansas State football program, she was Mama Wendy. Blake Anderson told us that they dedicated their lives to being servants of God and using football as their platform. And for Wendy, that meant spending a lot of time with the players, caring for each and every single one of them as their own. She would often show up to practice with snacks for the guys to enjoy between meetings. Her home was their home. She filled every room she entered with laughter and love even when she was in pain. She was what senior wide receiver Omar Bayless called a true fighter, and the Red Wolf will honor Wendy's memory by dedicating this season to her. Hashtag wear pink for Wendy. It went viral this week on social media. A tip of the cap to everyone here in Athens. Dogs won the toss and deferred. Arkansas State will get the football first. Red Wolves quarterback by the Lone Star State native Logan Bonner. Spent a couple of seasons as a backup to Justice Hansen. He waited for his turn. It arrived. It is his third start here today. And Kelly, the numbers have been fairly impressive for Logan Bonner so far. And what was important, Roy, is the growth and maturity out of these young men from week one, a heartbreaking loss at home to SMU. And then last week at UNLV, he lit it up and looked considerably more comfortable. Graham and Murray in the backfield. He'll swing it out. And the pass caught by Kirk Merritt. Been battling injuries. He's going to lose a couple of yards on first down. And so what we're going to see out of Arkansas State is a system that they certainly believe in. It's an RPO system. Run pass option has to be controlled in decision making by Logan Bonner. It's a spread, it's up tempo, but as you see right now, there's a lot of check with me, which means the quarterback, Logan Bonner, will fake a snap count and then look to the sideline for direction. Out of the gun on second and 13. Bonner with time, flings it, caught across the 30. It'll bring up third down and short, so a nice pitch and catch in our first look at Omar Bayless. And Omar Bayless and Kirk Merritt both are gonna have to have enormous days today. It's a wide receiver centric offense. It's about getting the ball to the perimeter to playmakers. Red Wolves need three to keep the drive going. Pass is caught across the 35. That'll move the chains. Second reception for Bayless. And Arkansas State told us yesterday, Roy, if you remember that it's all about not doing more than your job calls for. And it's just offensively, it's simply move the chains. Find a little more than a yard to gain and 
keep possession of the football early in this one. This is a program that was blown out at Alabama to start last season. Contended against Nebraska on the road two years ago. The inside handoff to Ryan Graham. He'll gain two. We talked to the team this week. They felt confident coming in if they can survive the early wave of red and black. Yeah, it is all about early because you get hyped up given playing in front of 92,000 in the SEC. So it's not about overdoing things physically or mentally early in this one. Play action. Bottom. There comes the pressure and down he goes. Tyler Clark got there first to record the sack. Logan Bonner is not in the Sun Belt Conference. You're not going to be able to hold the football very long. And that's the secondary really had to do with that, that sack. It's a coverage sack. A lot of diversity in the secondary and disguising looks, and it fooled Logan Bonner right there. Red Wolves need 16. Conservative play call on the screen. And an empty move by Merritt, but well short of first down yardage. Tyson Campbell ushered him out of bounds. And not a horrible start offensively for Arkansas State. State, it's not about getting points. It's about getting your sea legs, getting out there, getting comfortable as a group collectively on the offensive side, creating a little bit of field position. And now the punt team has an opportunity to pin Georgia D. First look at Cody Grace, 40 yards per punt this season. Well, a good start for the Dogs defense. Wanted to create more chaos this year. And a Georgia bounce. Karam's out of bounds near the 40. Punt of 21 yards. Georgia football when we come back. Blake Anderson back on the sidelines. Here in Athens, Georgia, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Gorgeous afternoon for college football. Georgia with possession, and quarterback Jake Fromm has made a habit of getting rid of five-star signal callers from the Classic City, starting first with Jacob Eason. Yeah, he certainly has done that. Started with Jake, Jacob Eason getting kicked off the ladder, and then Justin Fields. It's the confidence of this young man and the competitiveness, and then Alabama looms down the way, and how about that trophy that this program certainly covets? It's making pay when you can in the little details and that's who Jake Fromm is this year going into his third year of starting and it's about cleaning up the little details that will allow this program to take that last big step and win it all. A pair of juniors in the backfield DeAndre Swift flanking Fromm and a handoff on first down nice running room Swift bottled up after a seven yard pickup Jerry Jacobs got there first for a state. So James Coley, the offensive play caller for Georgia, says that it's a pro-style offense that features players and not plays. Well, one of those players that's going to be featured throughout this season is DeAndre Swift. He has everything that you need at the running back position, both running the football and that entire skill set, but also he's a really good pass catcher out of the backfield. Dogs need three. Opening possession for Georgia, Swift to the edge. And the junior from Philly into plus territory, a nice game. That'll move the sticks. So we take a look at our impact players, speaking of DeAndre Swift. Yeah, DeAndre Swift is certainly that guy. I think this is the year that he becomes the fe featured back, and we'll explain more about that. And Forrest Merrill and Kevin Thurman, if you want to watch college football at its finest, watch the defensive linemen. Both the interior defensive tackles for Arkansas State's defense are a pleasure to watch on tape. Dump off to Swift. Positive yards. First down, Georgia. And Swift tripped up crossing the 30. The dogs in business. Gain of 16 yards. And Jake Fromm has used, learned to use his running backs in the pass game. A lot of times, the tight ends and running backs can be your best friends. And Andre Swift has a really good sense of how to catch the football, square his shoulders and get yards after the catch. A great weapon in the pass game also. Now Georgia Kelly with a four-headed, maybe five-headed monster in the backfield. Brian Harrion checks in for the first time, 35 in red. It really is a matter of picking your poison with these talented backs. Fromm with plenty of time. Delivers his strike, Lawrence Cager. 
quickly tackled after a short game. Give him two, Jeremy Smith, outstanding coverage. That's what we talked about early, Roy, is, is the ability for Jake Fromm in starting his third year as a starter, getting through the progression. That was his third look. It ended up being wide outside to the left. He started down the middle and ended up with his third receiver. He no longer gets stuck going through his progression. It's very rhythmic, and you saw it there. Forward progress, a gain of five. Single back is Harriet. Punishing hit, Harriet. First down and goal, Georgia. B.J. Evans thought he got there in time. He did, but couldn't wrap him up. Yeah, missed tackle, and we were told that by David Dugan, the op defensive coordinator for Arkansas State, is our secondary are going to have to be magnificent tacklers today because there's a lot of running backs with the ball out on the edges, and B.J. Edmonds misses a tackle there at the line of scrimmage. Georgia has scored a touchdown on its opening possession in its first two ball games. Trying to make it three for three. Harriet turning the legs towards the end zone. Touchdown, Dogs. Well, we were at practice on Thursday, and it's a massive offensive line. One of the best and the biggest you'll see in college football, regardless of what conference. And then. Harrion is the finisher down close. He's a thick guy. We saw those guys together, and you have about everything in the skill set group that you would want, and Harrion is the finisher of that bunch. His third touchdown of the season, the senior from Douglasville, Georgia, finding a way in the dogs. Strike first here at home, Georgia, third in the country, flexing up front. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, and Sling TV, the best of live TV, and get thousands of top shows and movies on demand. Newly christened Dooley Field, just one week ago, named in honor of one of the all-time greats in college football. Won the 80 National Championship, Vince Dooley. And rightfully so here at Sanford Stadium. Dogs have been impressive to begin this 2019 season. 2 0. Out to a 7 0 advantage here against Arkansas State. Lauren Sisler, Kelly Stoffer, Roy Philpott. Great to have you with us. And a reminder tonight, Dabo Swinney, top ranked Clemson, will head north to the Carrier Dome to tangle with Syracuse. Tigers lost in the Dome just two years ago as the Orange pulled off a major upset. In fact, that was the Tigers' last regular season setback. 7.30 Eastern, ABC, 4.30 Pacific, and of course, on the ESPN app. Told it gets a little loud up at the Dome, Kelly. I bet it does. First sellout since 1998, is that right? It's going to be loud, and I think that's why Cuse has to have a really quick start to keep that crowd in it all night long. Babers has been Dabo's kryptonite. We'll see if that continues this evening. Inside give to Graham on first down. Hit hard after a two-yard gain. Devontae Wyatt got there first. Arkansas State wants to spread the field literally from sideline to sideline, even massive splits on the offensive line of scrimmage. Great run lanes, but the game really is outside for Arkansas State. They like their matchups. Wide receivers for them against the secondary for Georgia. Four-man front for the Dogs, drifting back in coverage. There comes the pressure. Quay Walker shot out of a cannon. Can't hold the football against Georgia's defense. There will be extra guys coming. Quay Walker comes right down the A-gap, and it was slightly delayed. When the quarterback looks away, that linebacker, Walker, fired immediately and got to Pater. Red Wolves out of the Sun Belt have won that league's championship three of the last four years. They will be tested here in Athens, needless to say. 
On third down, backside pressure. Bono releases, batted away. Incredible pressure. Ojolari got there, and Tyson Campbell swatted the football. Logan Bonner is getting beat up every time he holds the football slightly, and then Tyson Campbell was absolutely glued to the wide receiver. So you have tight coverage in the secondary, and you have pressure on your quarterback, but you can't live in third and long against Georgia's defense today, or it's not going to go well for you, Arkansas State offensively. Kelly, you and I wondered, would Georgia be looking ahead towards next week? Notre Dame comes to town. It's a night kickoff. A lot of people excited as Simmons is tripped up at the 45. And so far, the dogs have been as sharp as ever. 50-yard punt, 16-yard return. Dogs have it. Blake Anderson went through a three-week leave of absence, then surprised his team just one week ago at UNLV. I get a move, get a running side to side, man. Back to live action. First down grab by George Pickens. Bolts ahead to the 20-yard line after a gain of 32. Well, you really see the top of the skill set for both quarterback and receiver there. George Pickens is all about catching the football, catch radius. His ball skills are off the chart as a true freshman. And one of the best things that Jake Fromm does is the back shoulder throw, and we saw it right there on that play. Jake Fromm told us this week he's going to be special. We all can see it. There's Swift, a little shake and bake. And brought down at the 15 after a gain of six. You saw the video, Blake Anderson surprising his team last week at UNLV. No one knew he was going to come back when he did. One of the more emotional moments we've seen in college football this year. Third down coming up for the Dogs. Jackson the stop. He told us yesterday his heart was racing. Oh, yeah, his return, it was it was really life-giving to his team, and then that showed on the field later um, against UNLV, but it was also cathartic for Blake Anderson, and he and Wendy had talked about that, when he would return and how we would do it, but he came back about a, a day earlier than anticipated. Red Wolves need a stop here. They'll swing it out. Harrion's got it. And brought down short of the line needed to gain. Antonio Fletcher, Jeremy Smith combined to make the stop. Interesting decision now for Kirby Smart on fourth down. Yeah, and I think Kirby's going to play it down the line and send his kicker out there. But that was a really good series for Arkansas State's defense. A little bit of confidence. You have a, a team that's driving in a negative play to put them behind the chains. Now, Kelly, one of the more entertaining place kickers in college football. They call him Hot Rod. Known for the long effort in the Rose Bowl. He has been tremendous throughout his Georgia career, starting as a walk-on. And the chip shot is true. Dogs off and running here in the Classic City. 10-0 Georgia. 5.28 to go here in the first. NFL Prime Time is back on Sunday nights, bearing exclusively on ESPN Plus at 7.30 p.m. Eastern all season long. It's like you're taking me back to my childhood. Tom and Boom are back together again over on ESPN Plus, and I'm going to tune in. I'm going to oh, yeah. tune in tomorrow, right? Without a doubt. You got Without to. Without a doubt. I saw that in the hotel room, and I'm like, is this a rewind of something what am i missing <laughs> but absolutely i can't wait to hear them rumbling bumbling stumbling 10 nothing georgia dogs have been impressive so far
And Blankenship will show off that elite leg once again. Arkansas State, what needs to happen here to get the Red Wolves engaged a little bit more? Well, it's, it's really about one first down at a time, one really good play at a time. And I think right now, Arkansas State has to get out to the perimeter. We talked to them, and they really like their matchups offensively outside. Wide receivers against Georgia's secondary. Right now, Georgia's secondary is having their way in coverage against this really deep, explosive receiving core for Arkansas State. Graham in the backfield along with Bonner. Red Wolves just one first down so far. And no running room, no gain on the play. It'll bring up second down. And the thing that we haven't seen out of Arkansas State yet is tempo because they haven't gone anywhere. You have to possess the ball and have some quality plays in order to go fast. And they just haven't been able to do it early in this quarter. Under five to play in the first. Bonner will change up the play. Here comes pressure off the edge. Merritt's got it. And a quick screen. Will yield a couple of yards. Tyson Campbell, J.R. Reed, ready and waiting. And that's what they have to do, Arkansas State offensively. That's essentially an extension of their run game. They don't have a lot of perimeter runs, but what they have is a slew of different types of screens to get it out on the edges immediately. But Georgia's up to the task thus far, tackling from their secondary in particular. Third down. Pocket collapses. And Bonner flings it. Incomplete crossing the 40. Jonathan Adams could not corral it. Channing Tyndall in there applying the pressure. And so you can see the theme already. I think there are some matchups that Arkansas State would like to get to offensively, but before you can get any of that firepower off the deck, you have to be able to protect your passer. And right now, Arkansas State simply isn't doing that. Kirby Smart told us this week, trying to create more chaos, more negative plays, more TFLs. That's been a focal point for this defense going back to last year. So far, he's done that. Confusion on the fair catch attempt right off the back of an A-State defender. Now Blake Anderson talking with his team pregame. Have a listen. Hey, you cannot win the game in the first six minutes, but you can dang sure lose it if you lose your mind. No matter how it starts, ride the wave, do the little things right, stick together, and we're going to be just fine. It is a marathon, not a sprint. We want constant maximum effort. Let's play it one play, one quarter at a time, and I promise you, we'll be in the state at the end. That's all that matters. Let's do one play, one play the best we can. Right now, it's all that matters. Together. One, two, three. Together. First and ten for the Dogs. A-State needing that one big play right now defensively. Jet sweep action. James Cook, younger brother of Dalvin Cook, currently with the Minnesota Vikings of Florida State fame. And I tell you what, he runs just like him. He's got all kinds of speed. And Georgia offensively likes to use him in places just like that. Kind of a slot receiver, an extra back. It's not a true two running back set because he's more of a wide receiver. Wings and he goes in motions just like that and gets the, the fly sweep motion right there. And Kelly, you look at the weapons after a nine-yard game. Everywhere. You have Everywhere. From a quarterback, you have literally five running backs with unlimited potential. Tyler Simmons swings it around. He'll have a first down into plus territory, upended at the 50 by Jacobs. It, it's like an aircraft carrier. Think of that analogy. The deck itself, the carrier, is the offensive line. You have to have that regardless of the firepower. You can't get any of it launched if you don't start with the right foundation. Georgia has that. Maybe the best offensive line in football. And then you need the pilot. That's Jake Fromm. He's going into a magical third year in that position, which is special. And then the firepower galore. 
deep at running back, and he's learning to use the wide receivers as they get used to each other. Swift motions out from with time. Surveys, fires caught by Simmons. He'll gain eight, maybe nine yards to stop by Fletcher. And you talk about the offensive line as here comes the tempo. It's the largest in Georgia football history. 6'5", 328 across the board. Simmons has it, first down dogs. Sent out crossing the 30 down to the 29. So a gain of 12. So it's a really good mix of veteran offensive lineman and quarterback and even running back. And then wide receiver position was a question mark, but Jake Fromm just needs more reps with those guys. Now Simmons banged up on the Georgia sideline, and here comes a flag. Sideline warning against the Georgia sideline. That's their first of the game. Now Simmons, there was contact after he exited the playing surface. Jeremy Smith, a bit physical. Yeah, I didn't really see anything out of order there. I think that Smith just went down and happened to have a wide receiver, Tyler Simmons, in his grasp. Matt Leffler, our lead official today. Play action for Fromm, wants it all, going deep towards the end zone, incomplete. Pickens, the intended target, broken up by Jerry Jacobs, a pair of number ones getting after each other. And the tight end was right down the middle of the field, wide open, and Eli Wolf, and then it's the post outside. Move the safety with your eyes, and this ball could have gone a little bit deeper and gone up just a little bit sooner, and in the end, Jerry Jacobs, because it was slightly underthrown, has a chance to get that right hand in the basket and break it up. Jacobs, one of the top cover guys in the Sun Belt Conference preseason first team all league. On second down, Swift has it, far side, and tuck down crossing the 25. I guarantee you on Sunday or even Monday when Jake Fromm watches that play, he's going to say, I needed to get rid of the ball sooner. He could have set his feet and got the ball in the air, and that would have worked well to George Pickens. Tempo on third down, Fromm off his back foot, floats one deep, incomplete. Matt Landers, the intended receiver. Fourth down upcoming for UGA. Matt Landers only gets one hand up on this. This fade was a little bit outside. I think another foot inside and Landers can make a play with two hands, but we saw this quite a bit in the practice we watched. Jake Fromm constantly was turning around to James Coley, the offensive coordinator, and says, why do they only do one hand? What happened to the other hand? So a quarterback getting used to the question mark, which is his receiving core. Hot Rod perfect this season, this effort from 41. On the way, and good. Feels like a win for Arkansas State's defense, still trailing by two scores. One oh eight remaining in a fast moving first quarter. You think about the dogs this year and you hate to say it Kelly, but it feels like beat Bama or bust the eye on the grand prize at the very end. They've lost five in a row to the tide. Yeah, and especially the last two that were so close and then look who is looking on the outskirts of Athens. Notre Dame comes to town and Kirby has spent all week talking about don't look past this one. Now Arkansas State trying to pull off the stunner. It has not happened often. And not the kind of start Blake Anderson was looking for this afternoon, but plenty of time left. But you're right about Arkansas State defensively. The last two drives, they've held Georgia's offense to three points, and that's how a defensive game plan works. You start with the offense has seven on the board, how many can we take off the board on a given drive? Obviously, zero is good, but even holding an offense like Georgia's to three is a win for Arkansas State defensively. Blankenship's kick sails into the end zone as we check in for the first time with Kevin Connors. 
All right, Roy, and a look at today's matchmaker brought to you by Cars.com. It's been a clunker of a season thus far for Jeremy Pruitt, but not today. Gabe Boring, the block punt. Braden Johnson, a little scoop and score. Ball's trying to avoid its first 0-3 start since 1988. They're up 21-0 on the SEC Network. Well, it's been a rough start for Jeremy Pruitt in year two up in Knoxville. You're being kind. It's been a dreadful start. Well, important to get the win today, but also to look good in doing it just from a confidence perspective after losing at home to Georgia State and also in overtime to BYU last week. Yeah, without a doubt. Red Wolves will back up five yards. And Arkansas State jumped early, and what they responded to was movement on the defensive line for Georgia, and that's a new thing. Georgia's going to do more movement up front play a lot more games and be more aggressive in that way on the defensive front for Georgia. Bonner loops one deep. Adams, did he come down with it? They're going to say he caught it. Ahead at the 48-yard line. That ball came out. Tyson Campbell once again was on the coverage and well thrown by Logan Bonner. Give your big receiver 6'3", 210 pounds, Jonathan Adams, and that ball was never really possessed. Hit the ground, and although it was a good bounce back to Adams, but the ball had already touched the turf. Those are the type of plays Arkansas State needs to make today. Second down and 15, same play, this time same result. Well, Adams played a lot of high school basketball, was prolific. Has decent size, but a couple of incompletions here. Yeah, and that actually had a chance as well. It, Jonathan Adams has released well off the line of scrimmage, press coverage, got the defender Tyson Campbell in his hip pocket, and had a chance to make plays on both of those. Another third down. Bonner, back shoulder toss incomplete. Three and out for Arkansas State. Waiting for a little laundry on the field. Nothing doing. A nice effort again for Georgia's defense. Well, three and out again because it's been third and 16, third and 15, and third and 15 again. You can't afford to consistently get behind the chains if you want to move the football here today. All of the context, contested throws and catches that Arkansas State is being forced to try to make right now isn't working well for them. Busy afternoon for Cody Grace. We'll turn this one over beautifully. And a fair catch made by Dominic Blaylock. Now this season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. You know, Roy, if you're Georgia today offensively, so what is it that you're working on? Well, it's the fine focus, the details. They get you in the end zone in the red zone as opposed to kicking a field goal. And so two out of the three drives have ended in field goals. That's not good enough if they want to close that minuscule gap between them and Alabama or them and potentially Clemson. That really is what it's all about outside of week to week improvement. And taking care of business first carry. Zamir White, redshirt freshman, has battled a couple of ACL surgeries, missed last season. And I tell you what, he has all kinds of explosiveness. Yeah, he's the bigger back that has some quick twitch in him. He has certainly straight line speed. He's not exactly shifty. A little stiff still from the second ACL, but a physical specimen nonetheless. Cook right side, banged up to the 40, which should be the final play of the first quarter. Now the Georgia fans loud and proud on this Saturday afternoon in the Classic City in the pink out in support of the late Wendy Anderson. Hashtag wear pink for Wendy. What a showing by the Red and Black Nation here in Athens. Back in Athens, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Look at Purdy Field Fountain. 
here in this beautiful city on campus at the University of Georgia. All dogs to start first quarter in the books. Jake Fromm, a fast start as expected. And UGA also taking care of business on the ground. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler. James Cook checks on the field once again. Four in red. And Fromm's pass caught. Blaylock has it near side. Turns the end zone and there he goes. Touchdown, dogs. This team is so explosive. And the bad news for the SEC is the fact that Jake Fromm is just getting used to the receivers outside. Lost a ton of production out wide at the wide receiver position. And Jake Fromm told us all he needs is more time on the field with these guys. There's plenty of talent, but it's all about chemistry. Quarterback to a group of receivers that are ultra talented out wide. Second touchdown of Blaylock's young career. The freshman from Walton High School up in Marietta, Georgia. Dominic Blaylock starts out in the slot, and he's just going to run an out route. But consider the timing in ball placement. It adds up to yards after catch. And it doesn't hurt that Lawrence Cager ends up getting a block downfield, but it's a veteran quarterback getting the ball out on time accurately. Yards after catch by one of two true freshmen that can carry the mail when they get the football in their hands. Now the mailman that time was Jake Fromm. He delivered yet again. What did DeAndre Swift tell us too about Jake Fromm? He's a natural born leader. Yeah. He knows what everybody is supposed to be doing. And when he needs to tell you, he will. No doubt. He's a leader. That's what you have to do. You have to be the voice of that unit. And then typically you also become the boy, one of the voices on the entire team. But right now, Jake Fromm is entering a really special time. That third year as a starter, you just feel like as a quarterback, you always get the answers in advance. And he gets to the line of scrimmage, and a lot of times he knows where he's going with the football before he ever gets the snap. That was one of those occasions. Big boy football on display here in Athens so far. Don't forget to start your week two NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's tomorrow over on ESPN with Sunday NFL Countdown. Randy Moss goes one on one with Peyton Manning plus OBJ and Jarvis Landry. And you got Moss, of course. Then on Monday, Baker Mayfield and the Browns take on the Jets on Monday Night Football. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. What happened? to Baker Mayfield last week in the Browns. They got blown no out at idea. home against the Titans. I was blown away by that. Yeah. You talk about all the hype for little to no return. I assume it's going to be better this Sunday. Georgia native Marcel Murray checked that as a bouquet on the carry. Mayfield was picked off three times at home against Tennessee. And they've been the darlings of the National Football oh, League's offseason. Everybody wants to see the Browns do something didn't happen in week one. Yeah, three picks, and he was under duress a lot. You know, he's a guy that can move around a bit, and he needed all of that movement, and it still didn't help that team as a whole. Red Wolves three and out each of their last three possessions. Bonner on the run, completes that pass. That'll move the chains. Kirk Merritt makes the grab now that he's healthy, and a very important A-State first down. Yeah, and a very important play because now Arkansas State can go up tempo a little bit. De-emphasize that pass rush by going fast and trying to wear that front out for Georgia. On command, there's the tempo and the tunnel screen. Adams probing. Well, first down, he'll pick up four and a half yards. This offense is all about the rhythm of it. You know, to get in, have a couple of successful plays so you can go fast. And that's when this team really feels they're in rhythm. Bonner in rhythm here. Same play, similar result. And after a short game, close to first down yardage. And that's the first adjustment we really see in this game is abandon the inside run game and get the ball outside in that screen game to wide receivers. It was like basketball in, on turf, rather, when this team is in rhythm. 
foot one deep incomplete as we check in once again with Lauren. Yeah, Logan Bonner had to sit back and wait his turn behind two times Sunbelt Player of the Year, Justice Hansen. He had the opportunity to transfer but stayed the course, which in turn has garnered Bonner a lot of respect from his team, from his coaches. He's got the talent. He's a student of the game, and the coaches will tell you he's one of the hardest working guys out there on this team. Yeah, and Lauren, the, the important time for him was the development. He can apply the experience of the SNU game and go apply that the following week at UNLV, and he did that really successfully. As a bouquet straight ahead, stood up after a one-yard gain, it'll be third down. I love it when you quarterbacks start talking about quarterbacks. I always feel like I learned something. And with Logan and his ability to stay in Jonesboro, not transferring, I think he's learned a lot about himself. No, no question. I think that's such a good point. And that's why he had the respect of his teammates well before he ever got on the field, SMU in week one this year, like Lauren mentioned. Red Wolves need nine. Check that eight as Bonner's flush. It'll be fourth down. Malik Herring applying pressure. Yeah, Bonner realized that he's running from Herring, who's an SEC defensive player, and that's different than the conference he plays in. Typically, Bonner would be able to get outside, and he's really good outside the tackle box on the run, but you're not outrunning Herring and other guys like him on this defense for Georgia. That's a defensive end that goes out and runs down a pretty swift, nifty quarterback out on the edge. And he made it look easy. Yeah, he's only 280 pounds. Wobbler fielded by Blaylock at the 10-yard line. After a punt of 40, the worst starting field position of the game for the Dogs. That's coming up. Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers across the country. Jake Fromm takes us back to his high school days and a teacher that resonated with him. Miss Jamie Stewart, she was a woman who not only taught me math, but she also taught me how to grow up and, and be a young man. You know, she taught me uh, a lot about respect and she really helped me grow up, you know, not only in the classroom, uh, learning math, but how I can to be a productive member of society, you know, how can I go out, how can I affect people in a positive way, how can I grow my faith, and how can I be a, a great student at Alice County High School. And to learn more about Extra Yard for teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard, or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. There goes Swift, far side scramble, and sent out at midfield, a gain of 39 yards on first down. There's the speed, there's the elusiveness. He's the total package. Yeah, and I think 2019 that DeAndre Swift becomes the showpiece in that rug game. I don't think he has to share the backfield like he has in his first two years. It's that shiftiness and that burst and that big playability. Remember, he split things and actually just had a, a cameo role with Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb and then Holyfield last year. And now it's, I think, the Swift show. Play action, looking deep, Pickens, he's there. Incomplete, Jerry Jacobs with a PBU as we check in once again with Kevin Connors. All right, Roy, let's cue it up, our AT&T best performance, and I'm sure Georgia Dogs fans are gonna be devastated to see this. Georgia Tech is losing to the Citadel. Brandon Rainey, Raleigh Webb, a touchdown grab, remember, the Citadel beat South Carolina back in 2015. They're up 7-0 in the first. Roy? Kevin, thank you very much. Meanwhile, back in Athens, Jerry Jacobs, the injured A-State player. Injury timeout on the field as we step aside. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the Lexus ES, a product of mastery. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. Well, a Georgia tradition for 22 years, the UGA paint line. 13 students have their bodies painted, spelling out Georgia dogs. And this week, Connor Wendy Anderson, the students painted pink. Well done to all involved.
Jerry Jacobs helped off the field during that injury timeout. Playlock makes his second grab. There he goes again. Flag on the field. As that was tossed ahead to the 40, we'll check the penalty. Yeah, it was a bubble screen, and Matt Landers was the lead blocker, the whole wide receiver out to the right. And I think it's Matt Landers going to get called for the holdout on the edge. Holding on the offense, number five. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Second down. And that might be a subtle little difference between Jim Chaney's offense here in Georgia and he leaves and in comes James Coley. It's getting the ball out to the perimeter and that was an emphasis as you see number five Matt Landers with the hold and that was blatant. But Kirby Smart wanted his playmakers athletes out in space more and so that was an offseason emphasis for James Coley in this Georgia offense. Cook motions out. Harriet gets the carry. Nowhere to run. It'll bring up third down. Interesting. James Coley, very entertaining to talk to. And he told us this week, the standard you walk by is the standard you set. And that has been something that they have been preaching to this Georgia offense going back to the heart of the offseason to understand that we got to take this thing to the next level. If you see somebody not doing their job, no matter what it is, Kelly, you have to speak up and say something so that we can get better collectively. On third down, Swift in the backfield. Playlock motions out. Six-man pressure for Arkansas State, and they'll set up the screen. Swift with some real estate. There goes DeAndre Swift. Touchdown, Dogs. A flag back at the 34 after the 48-yard pitch and catch. We'll check the penalty. There is no foul for a pass interference. The ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. The result of the play is a touchdown. So essentially what that was, Roy, is that, that big offensive line for Georgia was downfield working hard. and. Andrew Thomas was right in the middle of it. Some call number 71 may be the best offensive line lineman in college football, but if the ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage, those offensive linemen can be engaged in their blocks. And that is why the flag was picked up. Darion Jackson had a chance. Could not corral DeAndre Swift. And a career-long reception for number seven in red and black, DeAndre Swift, the junior from Philadelphia. This may be a slightly underrated part of his game. I don't know if that's possible, but DeAndre Swift is a very good receiver of the football. And it, the screen game, there's an art to it. There's a, a symmetry and a chemistry that has to happen between running back and offensive lineman and running back and quarterback and Swift and Fromm have that. There's good news and bad news as it pertains to DeAndre Swift and Kelly Stauffer. The good news is he made a 94 on his personal finance test yesterday right before he sat down with us. The bad news is he's coming after your job when he's done playing ball. We have an agreement though. You heard us work that out, right? Yes. I said you're going to go play in the league for a good 10 years. I most likely will want to be done with this by that time. 89 yards in five plays and Lauren DeAndre awfully impressive early. Yeah, he's awfully impressive. And you know what? His bowling score is awfully impressive. He let us in on a little secret yesterday that he loves hanging out with us offensive linemen. He loves to go bowling. He even has his own bowling ball and he makes sure he shows up with the towel and the spray to keep Fair it nice and clean. Pretty impressive guy. Yeah, yeah. Kelly, I think he might be coming after your job. Why, why not your job? He <laughs> could have your job. I encouraged him to be a play-by-play -play guy. We could do this together, but I don't know why it's my job. He would, plays football, Lauren. He plays on the gridiron, and we just do everything else, right? So that's, that's Kelly Stopper's department. Yeah, well, you know, there's a trio here of guys that want to be broadcasters. J.R. Reed wants to be a broadcaster, right? And then you got Rodrigo Blankenship that wants to also yeah, be a whatever. broadcaster. So Come on. it looks like all three of us might be, uh, Yeah. might be but, in trouble. 
That's a good point there. On first down, Bayless, his third reception, a gain of five. Once again, here's Kevin Connors. Hey, Roy, it appears the Ryan Day era is off to a good start in Columbus. 7-3 Ohio State lead on Indiana when Justin Fields goes up top to Chris Olave. 14-3 at that point. Ohio State 24-0-1 in its last 25 against Indiana. Yeah, you go back to 1988, the last OSU setback to the Hoosiers. And meanwhile, Georgia fans are interested in what happens to the Buckeyes this year with Justin Fields transferring into Columbus from here in Athens. So we'll see. Arkansas State needs four. Quick toss. Grab across the 35. Kelly, that'll move the chains after a six-yard pickup. Eric Stokes in coverage. Well, and you said it, Roy. It was third and four. It wasn't third and 16. It wasn't third and 15 twice. It's third and four, and I think that's where the matchups out wide can convert and possess the football for Arkansas State. Twenty-seven, nothing, Georgia. Fourth catch for Bayless on the comeback route. Brought down at the 44. And now you see the tempo again for Arkansas State. You see the rhythm of it. You get a drive going. You have to be consistent offensively if you want to go fast offensively. But at the same time, Arkansas State, to try to have a chance to get back in it, needs to hit a big play. They'll try one here. Right on cue, it's incomplete. Kirk Merritt in and out of the mitts. Devon Wilson in coverage. That should have been a first down. Yeah, Kirk Merritt got by Wilson. Just a simple little post route, a skinny post down the middle. Well thrown and just not, it didn't seem like Merritt really anticipated that. He kind of short-armed it into his face mask. He didn't go out and snatch the ball out of the air two-handed. Crowd comes to life on third down. Flag on the field. And they'll do it all over again. On the offense, everyone except the center. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, a little insight into that penalty when it's everybody but the center. You bet on everybody else and not the center. The center knows the snap count as well as everybody. So I'm pretty sure that the center didn't snap it when he was supposed to. Are you taking that bet? I'm taking it. Okay. Pressure in the flats. Graham has it. First down, Arkansas State. A nifty play call on third down and eight, Kelly. Yeah, Jonathan Adams was out wide to the right. The wide receiver came inside on a slant route. But really what he was doing was trying to pick the coverage on Ryan, Ryan Graham coming out of the backfield. You're right. It was really well designed. Into Georgia territory is Arkansas State. Bonner floats one deep, looking for Bayless, incomplete. Coverage by Stevenson. Who almost looked like the intended receiver. Yeah, in the end it was. Omar Bayless was on the, the out route, or excuse me, the vertical fade route, and it was well covered by Stevenson. And, Bayless in the end makes a nice play. Your quarterbacks have to have confidence that you will do that at plays end as well if there's a chance for an interception. Big afternoon of college football on second down incomplete. We check in again with Kevin Connors. Hey Roy, Penn State had an 85 yard run. The next play, Sean Clifford threw a pick, but it was called back on a pass interference call. And then two plays later, Devin Ford from a yard out. 7-0 Penn State on ABC. I just love it when those two teams tangle because it's fierce and it's kind of an underrated rivalry. Yeah, it's a physical bloodbath is what that is. Both of those physical reputations on those teams. Third down flag on the field. Pass sails wide of Jonathan Adams. Adams. 
Offside on the defense, number 11, five yard penalty, third down. And that's one of those things that Logan Bonner, the quarterback, can use in his arsenal is use your snap count. You know, try to get that defensive line. If they don't jump, get them off balance. Don't let them anticipate the snap count. A lot of times quarterbacks, especially in this type of environment, will get in the habit of using the same snap count and essentially the defensive line can jump it. Red Wolves three of eight on third down. Bonner flush, heavy pressure. It'll be fourth down and you wonder if Blake Anderson will roll the dice and go for it here as Bonner took another tough shot. Well, Bonner has been on the ground after almost every pass that he's thrown other than the green screens out to the outside. And he's taken a beating. Correction. But the reason that Georgia can tee off and bring extra people is because Georgia defensively feels really good in the secondary with their matchups, and we've seen that. There have been a menagerie of guys on the back end for Georgia just glued to Arkansas State wide receivers. Late flag, the pass interference penalty gives Arkansas State the first down of the 29 of the Dogs. Any way you can get them, Roy. In desperate need of some points on the road to the SEC. We'll swing it out as a bouquet. Nowhere to run. Bottled up, sent down by Tay Crowder, the former running back with outstanding instincts. As a bouquet, it's a slip screen or a swing screen. You have their wide receivers blocking. They can engage. The ball's passed behind the line of scrimmage. The difference is the speed that comes from the inside of Georgia's defense. Arkansas State doesn't see that in their own conference. They're seeing it in bunches here today. That's a loss of four. As a bouquet on second down, nowhere to run. It'll bring up third and long. Michael Barnett from his nose tackle position. The first stop. Well, you talk about the SEC dominant against the Sun Belt. Look at the record, 152 wins, just 10 losses. Yeah, and there's a difference in dudes. That's that's the difference. Georgia and the SEC has them um, in bunches, and you see that speed and athleticism and the difference in this game. Bonner across the middle. And incomplete. Looking for Reed Tyler is tied in. It'll bring up fourth down and likely an A-State field goal attempt. Yeah. Get the cover off the rim, if you will, and try to get some type of points on. But Logan Bonner has been under duress from pass number one to that one. And when Georgia can match up on the back end, they will bring dudes on the front end. Blake Groupie, a sophomore kicker. This would be a career long. Perfect so far this season. 50 yard attempt. Plenty of distance on the way, and Arkansas State fails to get on the scoreboard. Groupie missed it. Timeout on the field. Fast moving first half, all dogs. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Georgia Bulldogs student section already on the watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Nothing like the old spike squad, the paint line, all like kinds it. of yeah. great traditions for the Georgia students. I love it all. And a lot of it pink today, which is even obviously more meaningful. Dogs have the football off the miss. The 50 yard field goal attempt by Blake Groupie. From back on the field and Harriet will pick up a couple. You look at Jake from his potential at the next level. How would you frame what Jake from could be in the NFL? 
Well, I think he'll play in the NFL for a long time. I don't know where he'll get drafted. He, remember, he's only in his third year of starting, beginning that year. He's 20 years old. He has more starts here at Georgia, and so there's a lot of growth to take place. But I think he has great feet, and he's a lead at the line of scrimmage at figuring things out defensively. So that's a really good place to start. Quick delivery there. Cager, the transfer from Miami, brought down at the 40. It'll be third down and three. B.J. Edmonds, the stop. Jake does not have the strongest arm in the world, but what he has is really good anticipation. I've played with guys that couldn't throw the ball across the street, but they could anticipate. And that makes up for a lot of lack in terms of arm strength. And that's one of the things that James Coley is trying to get him to do is anticipate deep throws better. Have it come down 42 to 45 yards instead of strong arming it down there. He gets out of his sweet spot a little bit. From on third and short's gonna throw it just off the fingertips of Matt Landers. That's a really good example of what we're talking about. Matt Landers had a step, a touch more air and drop it in the pocket instead of drive it past the outreached hand of the wide receiver. Those little subtleties, Jake Fromm still has time to work on. First punt of the afternoon for Georgia, Jake Camarda. In fact, I still have time to work on those things, and I've been done playing for decades. Well, it was interesting to listen to you and Jake and James Coley talk about it this week because there is a magical corridor between the 42 and 45-yard potential completion. More on that as we go through. Less than five to play here in our first half. Dogs out in front. Well, Georgia leading Arkansas State by 27. Brian Harrion got things going. Scoring scamper right through the A gap. Made it 7-0 before the Dogs took to the air. Dominic Blaylock, second touchdown grab of the season. DeAndre Swift next with the honors from 48 yards out. A career-long reception on a nifty move for number seven from Philly. And Georgia in command over 300 yards of total offense. Back in Athens, Kelly Stopper, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott, Arkansas State ball. And Graham will rumble ahead for a gain of four. Tay Crowder is one of the most explosive linebackers that I've seen in a long while. Just sheer speed that kind of catches you by surprise from the interior of the defense. He's running everything down outside the hashes. Well, you love his story, too. He came to Georgia as a running back, realized pretty quickly he wasn't going to see the field. I said, well, let's try you on defense. And he is really stuck at linebacker. And you see his instincts, 30 in red and black, with a silver bridges, we should say, on display today. Third down. Plenty of time for Bonner. Flings it, caught, and a short gain on third and five. Bring on the punt team for Arkansas State. Eric Stokes for the tackle of Jonathan Adams. And that was the mirror image of the play that Ryan Graham caught on the previous drive. And Arkansas State appears to be going for it right here. I wouldn't advise that. If I'm Arkansas State, things could spiral out of control rather quickly. Under center, Bonner's going to try to draw him off sides. And he nearly did. Timeout, Red Wolves. Yeah, the problem with that is Bonner doesn't go under center often. And so something's up That's when the quarterback takes a traditional snap, and Georgia was very disciplined there. Don't forget, coming up tonight, Tyson Fury defends his title against Otto Balin on ESPN Plus in English and in Spanish. That's headed your way at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific, from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas to order the main card.
Go to ESPNPlus.com slash top rank as we check in once again with Kevin Connors. All right, Roy, we look forward to that, and we look forward to the Army National Guard halftime report coming up. We've got a bunch of Big Ten teams in action. We will show you there. we got an upset brewing in the ACC that you'll want to keep an eye on as well. Plus, we'll look ahead to the other ACC matchup, Syracuse home to number one Clemson tonight. All coming up on the Army National Guard halftime report. Roy? Kevin, thank you very much. 7.30 tonight up at the Dome on ABC, the Cues and the Tigers. You recognize the irony if the Citadel handles Georgia Tech today. The triple option coming back to beat the old school triple option team. That's just delicious, especially if you're a Georgia fan. <laughs> Georgia Tech has enough to think about before you throw that on. 46 yard punt, Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler, the Georgia fans wearing pink today to honor the late wife of Arkansas State head coach Blake Anderson. Wendy lost her battle with cancer back on August 19th. Hashtag wear pink for Wendy. And a tremendous turnout today by all in attendance here at Dooley Field. On first down from quick slant Blaylock first down. Gain of 14 yards. Here comes more tempo. From feeling it in the zone. There's Pickens. And the talented freshman races ahead. That'll move the chains once again. Gain of 15 yards tackled by Chambers. And the true freshman, George Pickens, made a really good adjustment. Initially, he was covered in zone. He slid inside and showed his numbers to the quarterback. From pump fakes, delivers Pickens. Lauren Sisler, he has been impressive, just like his teammate DeAndre Swift. Yeah, this is an extremely talented guy. The team says he's fun to be around. He's not arrogant. He just needs some experience and really needs to become a student of the game. Kirby Smart referenced his blocking abilities. He's not afraid to go out there and block, but sometimes he goes for those knockout blocks that Kirby wants to see a little more control. The effort, though, is certainly there, and he's receiving high praise from all of his teammates. James Coley told us this week, he's going to make you right. If you throw it to him, he's going to make you right because the catch radius for number one is enormous. Swift. Lasso tackle from behind, a short game. And Roy, you mentioned this earlier in terms of the standard as we're going to see Georgia hurry up again, but we can talk about how I think this veteran group offensively is making sure that Pickens takes care of business. From delivers Pickens again on cue. Shoestring grab right at the sideline. Give it to him. This is what it looks like to make the quarterback right. And when a quarterback can have confidence in that, that's when things get pretty special. Sports Center top 10. Here we come on first down. There goes Fraun. Tight end has it. Transfer from Tennessee, Eli Wolf with the grab. The body control, the ball skills, the awareness of not only one foot, but two. That's good on Sundays right there, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty special. And he's just getting started. Yeah, he's good. We watched a couple of offensive linemen make sure that he was taking care of business in practice. There was a ball thrown to Pickens, he dropped it in the end zone. The offensive lineman made him carry the ball back to the official. Don't throw it, carry it back like you're supposed to take care of your own business. The standard you walk by, they say. All kinds of time for Fromm. Towards the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Lawrence Cager, his first as a dog. And UGA pouring it on here in our second quarter. Lawrence Cager does a really nice job of coming back for the ball. The first question is, does he come back too far? Actually, I think that is good. The ball has to be in possession beyond that end zone line, and I think Cager had exactly that. Working back to your quarterback when your quarterback's moving around, and replay booth, I think, is going to take a further look at this as Blake Anderson calls a timeout on the other side 
hoping that this ball came out of the end zone before it was possessed. Arkansas State coaches challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. This play under further review. Possession beyond the plane of the goal line. Firm control and a body part inbounds after possession and time to make a move common to the game, which in this case is simply going to the ground. But where was the ball possessed? It had to be beyond the very front of the goal line. Check those two looks simultaneously. This will tell you the story. That's a touchdown where yeah. I'm from. Yeah, that's good by a good 13 and a half inches. Al Ford, our replay official, should confirm. I love it when you put on your officiating cap, too. It's remarkable vernacular and cadence. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Arkansas State is charged one timeout, and Arkansas State has no more challenges remaining in the game. Not a bad use of the challenge or the timeout by Blake Anderson. You don't get to carry the timeouts with you into the locker room, and the challenge is going to be irrelevant if Georgia keeps rolling like they are currently. Lincoln chip off for the point after on the way and good. Jake Fromm has thrown for almost 300 yards and three touchdowns in these first two quarters. And Georgia looking like one of the top teams in America today. Yeah, and Georgia really offensively has everything that you want. A veteran Jake Fromm going into his third season. If not the best offensive line in the country, one of the best that can run it, that can pass protect. Even though I think early in the year, I think Jake Brom was taking too many hits, even though he wasn't being sacked. And then a diverse and explosive skill set at the running back position. The only question mark, and I put two question marks beside this on my boards. After we watched Jake Fromm interact with his receiving core in practice, I'm talking wide receivers. There were question marks. There were some things I could tell he wasn't comfortable with. When we talked to him yesterday, he said, I simply need more playing time with them and all will be well. We will see. Yeah. Notre Dame comes to town next week. What a scene it will be and Jake Fromm's gonna be in rhythm when that game begins under the lights here in Athens. When we were at Georgia's practice, I had to hide you a little bit. I was afraid I would lose you in and amongst the offensive linemen. There were about 16 of them that are 330 plus, and all of a sudden you would just disappear. I had, <laughs> sometimes I had kind of the dread of Maybe you wouldn't reappear again. They're massive. They are massive. That's a good thing in this game. And that's what's needed with all of these other weapons on that side of the ball, at least. And that's what's needed in the SEC when you play against these yeah. defensive lines that you have to play to, to win this conference. Bonner back on the field on first down. As a bouquet, we'll pick up a couple. Arkansas State out of timeouts. Score tells the story in this one if you're just tuning in. On a very busy day of college football, we honor Wendy Anderson, the late wife of head coach Blake Anderson at Arkansas State. It has been an emotional week and a great show of support here in Athens today with so many Georgia fans wearing pink, the color to raise awareness for breast cancer. Second down, far side. And stopped about a yard short by Monty Rice. No time to wind down. And Kelly, the dogs have been dominant here in their second home game of 2019. What you would expect from the nation's third ranked program. Yeah, no question. It's been surgical for Georgia offensively and a defense for Georgia that simply hasn't given Blake Anderson's offense breathing room at all and pummeled Logan Bonner time and time again in his first half. 
almost 400 yards of total offense as we check in with Lauren. Coach, when you look around these stands and you see pink, pink for Wendy, describe for me the emotion right now, being back out here on the sidelines coaching this football team. Uh, just the word that comes to mind, just, you know, really overwhelmed, just uh, outpouring of support and uh, just people uh, that are, you know, paying attention to what her legacy means and the way she lived. It's fun to be back out with the guys not playing very well, but, uh, you know, we'll keep working at it. Your team continues to fight through adversity. What has been the constant message to them? You know, it's life. I mean, just, that's the way life goes, and uh, you don't get to pick and choose your battles. You just you just got to step up. Just pull together as a family, trust in God, and, uh, and just do the best you can. Give the best effort you can. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Lauren, thank you. And Coach, certainly thinking about you as we'll send it back to Kevin Connors for the Army National Guard right halftime report right after this quick break. Athens, Georgia, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Sun starting to peek through the clouds here in the Classic City. How about them dogs? Uga in command. 34-0 to start our third quarter. The lead over Arkansas State. And the dogs will receive to begin our second half. Red Wolves out of the Sun Belt. They've won the championship in that conference three of the last four years. They are struggling on the road today as the opening kickoff sails out of, out of bounds. Dogs will get it number 47. with a touchback and also the penalty yardage. Oh, great to have you with us, Lauren Sisler, Kelly Stoffer, Roy Philpott here in our broadcast position at Sanford Stadium, Dooley Field. Dogs almost 400 yards of total offense in those first two quarters, yielding just 82 to the Red Wolves. Awfully impressive. Really machine-like on yeah. both sides of the ball, to be honest with you. I th would expect business as usual in this second half. Blake Anderson used the term overwhelming, and absolutely, in every facet of the game, Georgia was locked and loaded. Certainly no look ahead to Notre Dame next week yet. Hand off to Swift. Had a 48-yard pitch and catch for a touchdown in the first half. A career-long 48-yard scamper on a nice screen pass. And putting up big numbers, as you would expect, really all of Georgia's backs. Close to 10 yards per carry this season. And Kelly, you have to think probably business as usual for this first possession provided Georgia Get a couple of more points on the board and then a chance to get some backup, some much needed PT. Pickens plus territory and a first down. Gain of 12 yards and Pickens, a talented freshman. Been targeted seven times today and has caught five passes for almost 90 yards. From across the middle, incomplete as we check in with Lauren. Hey guys, Kirby Smart said that he really liked the way this team came out. They were coming out with energy. He was very concerned about that coming into this football game against this Arkansas State team, but he really liked their energy. He felt that some of the offensive series, they got a little lethargic, so he wants to see more of that coming here in the second half. He wants energy. He wants them to play fast and physical. Yeah, and Kirby Smart needed something to kind of find, not ne necessarily negative, but something to work on in this second half, and that is it. I think this offense can be a little more efficient at times. Swift bounces off a potential tackler, leapfrogs out of bounds near the 40. Let's see the new trend in football to try to hurdle the defender going back to Lamar Jackson some three years ago. And Swift is perfectly capable. <laughs> yeah, that's a trend that I don't want to participate in in, in football or in life. Just simply run out of bounds. I think you expose yourself more when you get up in the air. If you don't fool the defender, you're going to get a helmet in places that aren't that pleasant. Ouch. You don't want me to name those, do you? No, I don't. Third down and five from clean pocket. Surveys. Not known as a runner. Does a nice job here across the 40. It'll be fourth and less than two. And this might be a situational opportunity for this offense to keep them on the field convert in this fourth and short situation but when Fromm runs a football it's a good decision because typically he runs the football 
when he doesn't want to put the throw in harm's way. And that's what you saw in that play. So get in a fourth and manageable here with a massive offensive line. The biggest in school history. Almost 330 pounds per man up front. They'll use all that beef here for Brian Harrion. Check that from straight ahead. Needed two. He's right at the marker. And I think they're going to give it to him. I mean, what do you do with fourth and a yard and a half behind that offensive line? I mean, there are heavy dirt moving equipment in the country that wouldn't be able to prevent that offensive line from getting a yard and a half on fourth and two, fourth and one and a half. Dogs will get Notre Dame next week. A lot of people around these parts have been talking about that matchup for years. Here comes Cook. Far side. There he goes. James Cook to the house for the touchdown. James Cook is somewhat the X factor, not really used as a traditional running back yet because they're so deep in the backfield. But this is the second time we've seen number four Cook carry the football in plays like that. Wing position, go in a short motion, or in this case, it's a zone run inside and hand it behind the quarterback to Cook on the outside, and then it's just all out elite speed to the end zone. An extra point is good. Our new score, 12 2 remaining here in our third quarter. 41 to nothing, and James Cook from 37 yards out reaching Pater. That time it was too easy. NFL Prime Time is back on Sunday nights, bearing exclusively on ESPN Plus at 7.30 p.m. Eastern all season long. ESPNplus.com, that's where you need to be. Primetime returns, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Say that again, primetime. Primetime. Prime time. There you go. Right? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. 7.30 tomorrow. Meanwhile, here in Athens, 41-0 dogs. James Cook scoring the touchdown to start our third quarter. Big afternoon and evening of college football. Don't forget later tonight, Dabo and Dino. Number one, Clemson heads to the Carrier Dome to take on Syracuse. Tigers lost in that same venue two years ago. 7.30 tonight, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and also the ESPN app. Interesting to note, Clemson has really had a tough time of Syracuse last two matchups, but Syracuse has knocked out the Tigers starting quarterback in both of those tilts. So. Keep an eye on Trevor Lawrence tonight. If he goes down, God forbid. Syracuse perhaps has a chance, but Dino's done a great job matching Dabo. Dino Babers, head coach of the Orange. Merritt on the quick toss. He'll pick up five. Well, two defensive ends for Syracuse. It's been at the center of that last graphic we saw. Elton Robinson and Kendall Coleman, edge rushers. You heard nothing from them against Maryland last week. Why? Maryland's offensive approach was to mute their presence by getting rid of the football quickly. I think Clemson can do a little bit more than that, but if those two defensive ends for Syracuse doesn't sh don't show up in a huge way, Syracuse has no shot tonight. A stunning loss last week at Maryland. Are the Terps for real? Graham straight ahead on second and five, right at the marker. They'll give them the first down. You know, they call it the Carrier Dome after an air conditioning company, but there's no AC in the facility. So I think it's going to be hot. I think Clemson's been hot before, so I don't think that's going to really be that big of a factor. But that crowd's going to be first sellout since 1998. And it's up to Syracuse to keep those folks invested. Backside pressure. Lauren Sisler, Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott here with you in Athens. Dogs have been dominant here this afternoon. 
Yeah, and one of the emphasis is emphasis. Say that for me. Emphasize. <laughs> yes, that for Georgia's defense has been not only getting pressure, but getting the quarterback to the ground, and they've done that this year thus far. Play action. Bayless has it. Brought down at midfield. That'll be a first down for Arkansas State. DJ Daniel on the field making the start here at home. And after battling injuries, he was a late scratch last week due to a hamstring. Tempo for the Red Wolves. Bonner off the back foot, out of bounds. And he was literally off the back foot. That's why that ball sailed high outside to Omar Bayless. Not a lot of room on the back end with this Arkansas State receiving group. But Arkansas State was blunt about it. They thought they had a really good matchup against Georgia's secondary. We haven't seen that today, mainly because the quarterback doesn't have time. It's called a check with me. False cadence. Look to the sideline. Let the offensive coordinator essentially play a video game. Pick your play. Give it to the quarterback. Quarterback gets it to the line of scrimmage. Bunch sets, both sides. Merritt on the screen. Nowhere to run, brought down at the line by J.R. Reed. J.R. Reed, the son of Jake Reed, the former NFL standout. His sister's been a All-American track performer at Texas A&M. And we talked with him this week. I don't know if I've been more impressed by a single player we've spoken with this year more than J.R. Reed. Yeah, he's been uh, brought up well in, in life, but also in the game of football. And he absolutely gets it on every level. A-State needs nine. Dogs show pressure. Drop back in coverage. Bonner flings it. Incomplete double coverage. Stokes was able to bat it away. Well, J.R. Reed had a chance to go to the NFL after last season. Wanted to come back to school, Kelly, because he's ready to win a national championship, and the bloodlines are certainly oh there if you look at his family. Yeah, no question about it. And the theme there is speed. All of those people are faster than most human beings on the planet. But it's also the coaching from his dad. Always be aggressive as a safety. And then there's no such thing as a dumb football player. Watch video and do your work in the classroom. And JR is all of that. Well, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Arkansas State head coach Blake Anderson after he lost his wife, Wendy, just last month after a courageous two-year battle with breast cancer. The two were married for 27 years before her passing, leaving behind three children, Colton, Kaysen, and Callie. Blake has been courageous since her passing and has been transparent about how all of this has unfolded what his wife meant to him, and a courageous show of support as well today from the Georgia fans. Hashtag wear pink for Wendy. A lot of the stadium, not only in red and black, but in pink. Stetson Bennett, the new Georgia quarterback, as we check in once again with Lauren Sisler. Yeah, Roy, I asked Coach Anderson about his transparency through this entire process of Wendy fighting for her life and ultimately losing her battle with cancer. He said he feels he has a platform as a head coach and wanted to use it as an opportunity to share that he and Wendy's faith through good times and the bad. He felt that he was, it was his calling to see how his family walked through tragedy. And I've got to tell you, it has inspired me in so many ways and has moved me throughout this entire weekend and will continue to do so through the rest of the season. David Hale wrote a great story on ESPN.com chronicling a lot of their ups and downs before her passing and Blake really utilizing that to try to speak to others. Bennett right side picks up a Georgia first down. If you haven't seen the article, I would encourage you to check it out at ESPN.com. Yeah, this week has really been one of the most glorious 
and gut-wrenching weeks in this business for us. And Blake Anderson and the strength and the courage has been unreal. And he talked about it. His wife, Wendy, taught him to appreciate football. Don't make it light. Far side, Cook will pick up a first down into plus territory. You don't make football light, but let it be a platform where you can really celebrate the things in life that do matter. And she taught him. He was actually on his way out of coaching, actually was out of coaching for two years, and then got a call to be an offensive coordinator because she had basically said, you know what, this isn't going to work if you're going to treat the game of football like that. So it reset him. He told us that, the transparency Lauren was just talking about. He came back into coaching with a new attitude, wanted it to be the platform where they, they could share their faith and, and serve people in the game of football. And this has been a day to celebrate that. And that's what Wendy meant to so many people. I think that message for coaches around the country, you get so absorbed, so involved in your day-to-day -day job, and it requires so much that sometimes you forget about what's most important. And Wendy reminded her husband of the importance of family before he returned to coaching, and they agreed. We've got to do things differently the second time around. Blake did it and was a better man for it. Third down and one. Third down and long one. From the 43. Zamir White, the carry, come down to the spot and we'll check the mark. That was Zamir White's story, one of inspiration as well after a 21-month layoff between high school and his first game at Vanderbilt two weeks ago. A couple of ACL surgeries. Kelly, you think about it, he's lucky to be alive after he was born premature way back when. Bennett down the field. Blaylock has it first down. Back to the studio we go and Kevin Connors. Hey, Roy, the Citadel lost to Towson and Elon in weeks one and two, but they're up on Georgia Tech right now. Dante Smith, 12-yard touchdown run. The Citadel has 153 yards on the ground. Up 14 six at the half. Meantime, Virginia Tech upset issues of their own. They were trailing Furman until Ryan Willis finds Trey Turner 17 14. Roy. Kevin, thank you very much. Back here in Athens, another touchdown on the board for the Dogs. Trey Blunt from 13 yards out. That's just so. Stetson Bennett getting the ball out quickly and then the effort by Blunt right at the very end is a knee down. I think that's going to be reviewed and brought back to the one-yard line. Rolling on the field the right is a touchdown. Knee, I think, the previous down. play is under further review. I think the right knee of Blunt was down before the ball penetrated the very front portion of that goal line. Knees down, he's clearly short. Ball should be spotted around the one. Yeah, just outside maybe the one yard line. Great effort. And Stetson Bennett gave Blunt the chance by getting the ball out quickly. And that right knee, I believe, is going to be determined to be down before that ball crossed the plane of the goal line. Al Ford, our replay official today. I'll pose the question to you as we get deeper into this blowout. 
how good can Kirby Smart's club be? Dominant today, dominant in their first two games. And don't look, don't gloss After over review, the 30-6 win the ball against the Vanderbilt. That's Split the screen here, you can match it up. For Georgia. And the call reverse correctly, we might add, after the review. So, so we'll, go ahead. I'm teeing you up. You're teeing me up. I'm Is teeing that you up. Here? And I want to kind of paint you into a corner at some point because <laughs> this team, with the coaches I speak with, this team in Georgia is poised, I think, to make a significant run, not only this season, but I think in the years to come. First down, no, 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 no. Have you painted me into said corner yet? I haven't noticed it. I'm getting closer. Okay. Old school eye formation for White. Here comes Zeus. Left tackle scamper into the end zone. Touchdown. And the crowd in unison. Zeus. Samir White, you can call him Zeus, does a nice job of just being patient. As long as there's no quick penetration, which there isn't there, be patient, wait for softness, and then just find the goal line. And for a young runner who hasn't had a lot of touches, even something like that is significant. Georgia Bulldogs third in the country. 530 yards of total offense. Pick your poison in the backfield this time. It's White. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. Well, going back to the very first Aga, 1956, the beloved Bulldog mascots have made their home in Savannah and magazine covers alike. And I get the sense Aga 10's nice and cool in his, in his, <laughs> in his abode there. I, I've heard that. There's a little AC going on there, a little bit more than we have in the booth here. Although we do have a nice box fan underneath us that has worked well today. <laughs> I think Uga has a bit more than that. 48-0, Dogs. Third rank Georgia living up to the hype in this one against Arkansas State out of the Sun Belt. Back to the studio we go in Kevin Connors. Hey, Roy, former Georgia defensive coordinator Mel Tucker as Colorado off to a 2-0 start, but Ralphie is struggling with Air Force right now. Donald Hammond the third to Benjamin Waters. Off he goes into the wild blue yonder. 20-10, Air Force leading at the half. Meantime, Maryland struggling with Temple today, but Anthony McFarland finds pay dirt. 9-7, Terps lead this game in the third. Roy? Kevin, thank you very much. With Kelly Stopper, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott, we saw Colorado and head coach Mel Tucker up close and personal two weeks ago in their win against Colorado State. Former Georgia defensive play caller has CU pointed in the right direction, but obviously rivalry game today against Air Force for the first time in more than 25 years, I'm told. Yeah, and Mel Tucker started his college football career as a head coach in an interesting way because he had Colorado State, then he had Nebraska, then he has Air Force up the way running this flex bone triple option offense. That's really three rivalries to begin his career. That's not easy to do, but so far so good. But he's having a little bit of trouble against Air Force today. Andre Harris needing assistance off the field, the starting left guard for Arkansas State. Red Wolves out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. One and one coming into this game today. Destroyed UNLV on the road last week, lost against SMU back in week one. And that's the one thing, obviously, that you don't want if you're Blake Anderson. A lot of lessons to learn coming to a place like this and playing a team like Georgia. But you don't want to get beat up going into your conference play. You want, I mean, that's the goal still for Arkansas State is to win their conference. You don't want to be losing guys in a game like this.
on third down. Bonner's got to hurry. Fires a strike. Bayless has it. It's going to be about four yards short to keep the drive going. Devon Wilson with a tackle. And that's another way that I think Georgia's pass rush has influenced this game is even when Georgia doesn't get to Bonner, they affect the accuracy on the other end. That ball was a little bit high to Bayless. He had to leave the ground, didn't get the yards after the catch that Bayless potentially could have needed to convert. Blaylock back deep to receive this Cody Grace punt. Familiar formation for Arkansas State today. Fair catch of the 22. Two and a half to go here in our third quarter in Athens. Let's see who's slinging it today. Brought to you by Sling TV. Well, Jake Fromm is entering that place where he can do so much at the line of scrimmage. He typically knows the answers to the test, sees the Pressure to the left, the audibles to the right side, rolls out and gets away from that pressure. And then there's pressure coming inside. The defender's left inside on the coverage as well. A good throw will beat that coverage and then a guy that can carry it to the house and one of those young freshmen. So Fromm is learning how to sling it to guys that are still proving themselves. And that's the last piece of the puzzle, I think, Roy, with his offense is Fromm with the some newbies out of that wide receiver position. We met with Jake yesterday, and I told him right out of the gate, we know you like to hunt, we know you love to fish, but we want to dive in a little deeper with Jake Fromm. And I talked to one of the longtime beat riders covering Georgia earlier this week, Dean Leggett. He told me he's the most competitive player I've ever been around. He'll rip your heart out and show it to you. And that really struck a chord with me because that level of competitiveness could be what is needed to get Georgia back to the national championship game. I think you're exactly right. And you look at that fire. He sent some pretty talented signal callers elsewhere yep. already in his Georgia career. You go back to Jacob Eason, a five-star signal caller that left UGA to go to Washington. Justin Fields now at Ohio State. And you look at some of the other notable names that we're all watching this year. Kelly Bryant, Jalen Hurts. It's been kind of a merry-go-round of sorts at that position in college football. Yeah, the quarterback transfer portal or the transfer portal as a whole, and quarterbacks are certainly using it. If you can't get on the field, then you go somewhere else. And you've already mentioned that. But these are guys that are going to influence the landscape of college football across the board. Eason and Fields used to be here as you talked about, but Fromm got on the field and just simply out of his competitiveness just said, I'm not leaving. And that's exactly what happened. Well, a targeting call will prompt a pause in the action here. And of course, targeting an emphasis in recent years to try to Make this game as safe as humanly possible. You're looking for launching. You're looking for forcible contact. You're looking for all of that in the head or neck area. And it can also be with the crown of the helmet. And as a ball carrier, that's all that one could be, is if the defender led with the crown of the helmet and initiated an attack to initiate forcible contact. And I don't think that's it. He's a ball carrier, so he's not of the defenseless mode. And so if the defender is not leading with the crown in this type of potential targeting, it's Monty Rice, the will linebacker, then this can't be targeted. And I believe that's going to be the ruling. The only question would have been, could the defender led with, and it's actually Chambers, led with the crown of his helmet, and he certainly did not. Clearly coming in with the shoulder. Right. 
and it's not a defenseless player. So the category has to be the crown of the helmet, which applies to anybody anywhere. And the crown of the helmet could actually impact the player anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the head and neck. Well, the big change this year is that final spot on the graphic. The ruling on the field either has to be confirmed or overturned. And in this situation, they will overturn that call on the field. Tajay Chambers did the right thing. He led with his shoulder. After review, there was no targeting on 32. He will remain in the game. Second down. And at the end of the day, that's how the process should work. It can be initiated by the booth, and then the entire targeting has to be reviewed from the beginning or officiated from ground zero once the replay booth gets it. That was well done all the way around because that certainly wasn't targeted. You're batting 100 so far no, today, absolutely. or 1,000, and the replay booth is as well, our official Al Ford. Stetson Bennett, the quarterback, the new running back, Kenny McIntosh. He'll get the carry on second down, a former four-star prospect and the 13th-ranked running back in the country, according to ESPN. His brother plays for the Giants, RJ. And he's just another in a long line of Georgia greats. I mean, it all starts with Herschel in these parts, but Rodney Hampton, Garrison Hurst, Robert Edwards, most recently Todd Gurley, Sony Michelle, Nick Chubb. The list goes on and on and on. We mentioned Zeus, DeAndre Swift. A couple of more years in McIntosh will be the next great. Clean pocket, Bennett to Blunt and into plus territory. The junior from Atlanta will pick up a first down. There is a penalty flag back at the 36. Holding on the offense, number 73. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Xavier Truss. And Xavier Truss in at that left tackle position in for Andrew Thomas, one of the best left tackles, actually the best offensive lineman in the game in college football. And Trust just gets beat quickly to the outside. Which should be the final play of our first, check that, our third quarter. And Stetson Bennett barking out instructions. That's Let the, the end of the third quarter. Wind out. Timeout on the field, 48 nothing, dogs. Kevin Connors in studio. We just showed you Maryland going up 9-7 on Temple, but then the very next play from scrimmage about Anthony Russo to Jaden Blue. It covers 79 yards. Temple retakes the lead on the 21st ranked Terps 13-9. Meantime, Citadel was leading Georgia Tech 14-6 until Lucas Johnson found Jalen Camp 33 yards. The Ramblin' Wreck would go for two and get it. 14-14 game, early third. Roy? Great stuff, Kevin. Thank you very much. Back here in Athens, Georgia, to start our fourth quarter. The Dogs, third-ranked team in the country, leading Arkansas State by 48. A little Where's Waldo on your Saturday afternoon. KS. Stetson Bennett, the quarterback. Kenny McIntosh, the tailback. And on third and long, gain of about three, maybe four. That'll force a rare Georgia punt. Georgia's defense has given up just one touchdown through more than two and a half games. With a big one coming to town next week, Notre Dame here in Athens under the lights. B.J. Edmonds ushered out near the 20. Take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. Notre Dame seventh in the land, Georgia number three. You could argue that Georgia has been the most impressive team in college football up to this point. The schedule has not been difficult. Notre Dame UGA, what are you thinking? 
I like what I see out of Georgia. There isn't any doubt about that. I think uh, Notre Dame has to prove they can stop the run. I didn't like the way their run defense looked against Louisville to start the season. So we'll see how that plays out. And I think with this fast and aggressive Georgia offense against Ian Book's run ability is going to be the matchup that I think decides that game. Kelly Stopper, Lawrence Sisler, Roy Philpott. A gap charge by DJ Chapman. Gain of 10 on first down. That'll move the chains. I'm not a believer in that top 10 either. At Florida and Michigan are top 10 teams. I don't, I don't know what people are seeing, but I, I certainly not there. Florida at Kentucky tonight. That'll be a test over on ESPN. Seven o'clock start. People still sleeping on Big Blue to a certain extent. Adams into Georgia territory. Jonathan Adams makes the grab over DJ Daniel. Clemson and Syracuse later tonight up at the Dome. Now you wonder if Syracuse can refine its mojo without Eric Dungy. Chapman bolts across for a short game. I mean, he really was kind of the DNA on that side of the ball. Just a physical presence, charismatic leader, and he could throw the rock. Yeah, and he could run the rock. And he ran physically for he stands in that department. But DeVito can throw it. But you can't win every game by throwing the football, especially against Clemson. Stevenson's going to be whistled for an infraction here right over the back of Omar Bayless. Pass interference on the defense, number seven. That's a spot foul with an automatic first down. Greek Stevenson gets called for the pass interference here. Omar Bayless matched up outside. The press coverage, the SEC, corners that are long and strong and physical, and it's hard to get off of that press coverage, especially if you're from the Sun Belt Conference and you're not used to that aggression out wide. Arkansas State came into this game loving their matchup. I won't say loving, liking their matchup between their wide receivers and the secondary of Georgia, and it just has not played out that way. Chapman tried to get outside, could not. He'll lose a yard and a half. Robert Beal. A lot of people have forgotten about Notre Dame after the semifinal blowout last year at the hands of Clemson. Ian Book for a while was really one of the darlings of college football. Managed the game for Brian Kelly. Defense was solid. Weapons at running back. Notre Dame's going to come to Georgia next week as an underdog. Make no mistake about that. I'm curious to see if that team has improved since the playoff loss. Well, the thing that I'm interested in is can this Georgia defense make Ian Book throw the football to win? Because he, I think he's a much better runner than he is a thrower. He's a thrower to open looks, open receivers. I don't see him making a lot of contested throws. I think based on what we've seen out of this Georgia secondary today, there are going to be a boatload of contested throws and catches in that game, and we'll see how Ian Book holds up in that environment. You love the experience in the Georgia secondary on third down. Pass is caught, but well short of the line needed. I mean, you got Mark Webb's a junior. J.R. Reed's a senior. D.J. Daniel now gaining health. LeCount feels like he's been in Athens forever. You have outstanding talent being developed behind those upperclassmen. The best safety duo in the country might be J.R. Reed along with Richard LeCount. I mean, we'll start there, and then you have shutdown corners outside. Even though DeAndre Baker is in the NFL now, he was their shutdown guy. But I see two or three or maybe four shutdown guys in this secondary. Blaylock's going to get away from that punt. That will be down at the one-yard line. Punt of 40 yards. Georgia football when we come back.
You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. Dogs pouring it on against Arkansas State out of the Sun Belt. And a reminder, you can help those people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. We encourage you to do so. As so many people, their families, their lives impacted by that terrible hurricane just over one week ago. Stetson Bennett from his own one. Inside give as we check back to the studio with Kevin Connors. Hey, Roy, you know the Citadel wants to run it and run it and then run it some more. They've got 237 yards on the ground on 46 carries. Brandon Rainey, he's run for one and thrown for one. The Cadets leading Georgia Tech 21-14. You know, it was just three years ago the Citadel went on the road, upset South Carolina in what was Steve Spurrier's final season in Columbia. By that time, he had already resigned. That's a program that can be a difficult out. Georgia Tech finding that out the hard way. Bennett launches one deep towards midfield. Incomplete. Jalen Johnson, a freshman from Duluth, Georgia, and covered by Nathan Page. And very well thrown by Stetson Bennett. Receiver certainly had an opportunity to Jalen Johnson put exactly where you need to do that. And Bennett, we saw in practice, does a really nice job of throwing on the rough. And this was picture perfect. And Jalen Johnson obviously doesn't finish, but it gives you a little insight of who Setson Bennett is. He's a slinger. He loves to throw the football. Yeah, six of seven off the Georgia bench, 74 yards today. Prather Hudson, the Georgia running back. And Johnson records his first career reception. The walk-on receiver as we check in once again with Lauren. You know, Coach James Coley said this is a guy that was an air raid quarterback back in high school. He likes to step up, let it rip, and rely on his receivers to just make those catches. Of course, that was a great throw there. There's been a learning curve, though, for Stetson. So Coley is really using the film room to teach him to be more deliberate in formulating and sticking with those reads. Yeah, Bennett played in an air raid system. It was all about executing some concepts, and it was grip it and rip it type of mentality. And yeah, now, Lauren, you have to have a plan. This is a pro-style system that features players, not plays. And Stetson Bennett is forced to have reasons for his decision-making now. Willie Erdman makes the reception. As you see, Stetson Bennett walked on at Georgia, was a scout team quarterback, was a legend on that scout team in that run to the national championship game. Left the school, went played junior college football, and then Kirby Smart called him one day and said, Stetson, we want you back. We're going to give you a scholarship. Come back to Athens, and guess what he did? That's about when Justin Fields left at that same time, and Bennett's not a real big dude. So if you think of transposing that into a SEC defensive front that's going to be getting after him, it's a good change of pace in an emergency situation for Fromm, but not the same type of quarterback. Prather Hudson with the reception and a first down for the Dogs. Only 5'11", 190 pounds out of Blackshear, Georgia, and Pierce County originally. I love the scout team legends. A lot of times they emerge in spring ball, and you hear people get excited about somebody that's never going to be an impact guy. Hey, one play would make Bennett an impact guy in a potential championship run this year. God forbid if Jake Fromm went down. McIntosh flashing the ability. McIntosh for a Georgia touchdown. 62 yards. Roy, there really aren't enough footballs on the field or touches in a game plan to give it to guys like McIntosh. But you talk about the cut ability. Put your right foot in the ground and you're to the left four feet before the defense can react. 
try to tackle this, Roy. Put yourself in the eyes of the defense, right? Boom. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's, that's quick. Brothers plays on the New York Giants. You got to think Kenny's thinking about the next level at some point in his career. Just a freshman. Has a long ways to go out of Fort Lauderdale. And a former four-star prospect. It's one of the reasons why. Now where do you put these guys? It reminds me of Pete Carroll at USC at one time when he had like six deep at the running back position. And he talked about they still keep coming because they want to measure themselves against the best. I think that's what they're doing here in Athens currently. Double nickel in play here in Athens. It is all Georgia. ESPN College Football, brought to you by AutoZone. Get in the zone. Try to run a draw with Herschel Walker. He drives off the tackle. Five yards, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Herschel, there goes Herschel. Touchdown. He has just broken the all-time record for a freshman back. The stadium went bananas because there went Herschel again. My God, a freshman, Larry Munson, one of the all-time greats here in the Deep South, and Herschel Walker, one of the best running backs to ever play, and of course, Georgia claiming that national championship. One of the very best behind a microphone as we check in once again with Kevin Connors. Hey, Roy, second straight year, K-State and Mississippi State are squaring off. Kylan Hill ran wild last year. Malik Knowles is running wild right here. 100 yards on the kick return. After the Bulldogs had just gone up by seven, it is now tied. 24 all, fourth quarter underway over on ESPN. Roy? SEC Big 12 there. We've got Sunbelt SEC here. The score paints the picture in this one. New Arkansas State quarterback, Lane Hatcher. Three and white and black as the handoff goes to Chapman. Dogs will get Notre Dame next week. And I want to ask you too, a lot has been made about Georgia getting Alabama at some point later down the line this year. Maybe, maybe twice for all that we know, but certainly the possibility is there in the SEC championship game. Somebody's got to beat Nick Saban at some point. And when I say that, I mean one of his former assistants going against their former boss. We've got one on the sidelines today in Kirby Smart. I want to pose the question, and we encourage you to check out our Twitter account at ESPN CFB, and you can submit your vote. Which former Nick Saban assistant will be the first to beat him as a head coach? Right now, Kirby Smart by far and away, the runaway leader. I tend to think it would be him because Kelly probably should have beaten him twice already. Third down and short, that should be enough to move the sticks. Yeah, and it is. I, I'm with you. I think that's a keen grasp of the obvious. I think Kirby Smart has the team right now that may do it this year. Jimbo Fisher doesn't seem to be that close after the whooping he got from Clemson in Death Valley. I think Kirby Smart has the pieces right now that they could very well do that. Now the explosive play, potentials there on offense, the defense creating more chaos. Adams corrals it and brought down in the red zone for the first time. Well, his dad is one of the best to ever play at Arkansas State as a running back. That game is a 44 yards. Matched up on a mere speed, and shall I say it? Speed wasn't fast enough right there against Jonathan Adams. Jonathan Adams is a big physical receiver. Got away with a little push in the back and created some separation. Handoff from Hatcher to Chapman, brought down by Jermaine Johnson. But press coverage outside, turn the corners loose out on the edges, and Adams gets away with a little push at the end, wasn't called, creates a little separation, and well thrown by Hatcher. Redshirt freshman out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Wheeling and dealing off the bench for the Red Wolves. And that pass batted down. Number 22, Nate McBride. Nate McBride able to swat that one away. 
So the the areas that I think Georgia can close that gap. I mean, I don't know how much of a gap it is. They they should have potentially could have won the last two outings against Alabama. So I'm not sure there is a gap. I think it's who shows up and does the little things right in the big moments in that in that potential matchup. And Georgia has every reason to believe it could be them just as much as Alabama. A fake punt and a second and 26. Otherwise, who knows what we're talking about today as it pertains to success on the field for UGA. First short timeout, Georgia. Dogs take a timeout. 55 point lead. Now coming up later tonight on ABC and the ESPN app, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, Saturday night football, Clemson and Syracuse number one on the road. Last time they were there at the Dome, Clemson exited with a big fat loss, but BYOG has a way of working magic for Dabo Sweeney. They've been one of the best in the business the last five years. Yeah, I don't know that there's anyone that can argue with that. It, is there anything to some type of a mental hiccup that they have with Syracuse currently. I don't know that if you're that elite that you have such things but Syracuse has played them in a way that not many people have in the recent past. I think that filters down from the head coach. Fourth down here for A State. And a timeout's going to be called. First charge. Timeout. Check in once again with Kevin Connors. That's hey, Roy, over on ABC, the 100th meeting between Pitt and Penn State. Look at Noah Kane bust off a 13-yard touchdown run. Penn State had the third-best point differential in the FBS coming into this one, but they are locked up in a rock fight, 17-10 over on ABC. Meantime, Maryland hanging tough, battling back to take a 15-13 lead on Temple, 13-10 to go in the fourth quarter, Roy. Well, Maryland only scored about 7,000 points in those first two games, finally held in check here in week three. That's an interesting team in College Park. Yeah, schizophrenic may be the word. Maybe they used all their points last week against Syracuse, and that, that's a good word that Kevin used for Pittsburgh and, and Penn State, a rock fight, and they might be big rocks in that one. Fourth down, Hatcher. Towards the end zone, double coverage, and it's picked off. Lewis Sane with the interception to preserve the shutout. Georgia football, when we come back, Well, don't forget, coming up later tonight after Texas Tech, Arizona, we'll have Sports Center with Stan and Neal. They'll have the latest on the Antonio Brown drama, his status for tomorrow's game against the Dolphins. Also, Tyson Fury's heavyweight title match. Can't wait to see the update there. Sports Center after college football on ESPN, also the ESPN app. A very busy day, and of course, which ranked team is going down? The last time we had a weekend where there were no ranked teams facing off against each other, seven ranked programs loss to unranked teams it's going to happen the question is who and when nathan priestley the new georgia quarterback and savon clark with his first carry of the afternoon dogs in control just how they have been since the opening kick I would have thought before last week on our Twitter poll that Jimbo Fisher would have garnered more votes because he's an offensive mind to combat Nick Saban's defensive philosophies. We're talking about the first former Saban assistant to beat Nick Saban. Who will it be? And now Kirby, I think, is the leader in the clubhouse. And they've been close. You go back to the 2017 National Championship, blew a two-score advantage, lost in overtime on second and 26. In the SEC championship last year, again led by 14. Fake punt, some issues, you end up losing by seven. 
They've been close, Kelly. Is this team good enough to get over the Bama hump? Well, if, of course they aren't good enough, but the thing that they're missing, as you see it right there in that graphic, the last two games against Alabama is they just haven't done it. Alabama's been there, done that, and that matters when it comes time to close out and win a game in some fashion, and Kirby Smart's team just simply hasn't done that here at Georgia. That's the only thing left to have happen. I don't oh. think there's a lot of difference talent-wise. Priestley's pass incomplete looking for Johnson. I mean, if we, if we had a bunch of boxes to check, talent in every position in every unit, I think it would be fairly even by the time you check boxes. And so quarterback-wise, you have Jake Fromm and Tua. I think Tua still wants it all every time. And he's a big play-minded guy. It gets him in trouble. I trust Jake Fromm in those moments. And so what else doesn't this team have wide receiver-wise? Do they have the big play guys that will match up well against Alabama's back end in big moments and go up and make plays? Can the newbies, George Pickens and Dominic Laylock, wide receiver position, grow up fast enough to impact a possible matchup against Alabama? Pickens is the one player you think of with his size that has a chance to stretch the field against the Crimson Tide defense. I mean, it really has beat Bama or bust. They've lost five in a row to the Crimson Tide. Then Notre Dame comes to town next week. It was the win against the Irish two years ago on the road. The start made by Jake Fromm that really catapulted Georgia on this different trajectory back towards national prominence. At least having a chance to win a national title. And so Notre Dame returns the favor in the home and home next week under the lights here at Sanford Stadium. Oh, what a what a setting that's going to be. I mean, people were talking about that game when it was announced years ago and what the atmosphere would yeah. be like. They're bringing in additional seats next week to make sure that they are at full, full capacity. Yeah, and Kirby Smart had to harness that from really for the last few weeks looking forward to this. And, and now they can turn their undivided attention to the Irish and I think Kirby Smart has a team that will match up well in that game against Notre Dame. Give the staff credit, too, in Athens. There was no looking ahead past Arkansas State. They talked the talk during the week. They walked the walk on the field today. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a great point. Champions take care of business even when it's not easy to do that. In games like this, that's the truth. Adams. Adams to catch. That was made by number 39, Hugh Nelson. Third down. Third down. Oklahoma State and Tulsa headed your way when we're done here in Athens, GA. Lane Hatcher straight ahead. Needed three, he'll pick up four, and that's a first down. It's at four yards and the Dogs are going to be heavy favorites, you figure. Just about every game the rest of the way. Number 45, Bama, or potentially LSU looming in the SEC championship game. A lot of people think that LSU is poised to make a run now that Joe Burrow has given that offense life for the first time I, in I would a long agree. Time. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. I think at Auburn, in November is going to be a tough matchup because of the way Auburn can run the football. Bo Nix, the tr true freshman, can you put him in tough positions? I'll go back to what you said earlier. Ninth ranked Florida that may be a little high until proven otherwise. Yeah. They should be ranked, but ninth in the country may be a little high. That game will be played, of course, in Jacksonville. Texas A&M, Aggies come here late in the year before the road trip over to Atlanta to close down the regular but season. Inevitably, after Notre Dame, someone on that list other than, I think, an Auburn or a Texas A&M is going to give a game to Georgia that we didn't expect. Somewhere in the season with 18 to 22-year-olds, you inevitably have something like that show up. The maturity on this team, I think, will overcome that moment, and then it's all about closing out and trying to get to whoever comes out of the West.
Kirby said it. We want to create more chaos. They've done that defensively in their first three ball games. More sacks, more TFLs. They've been more aggressive. That's been a common theme throughout the offseason. And, and that's a that's a new thing. Even with the reserve players, Jermaine Johnson on cue. A loss of six and another sack for the Georgia D. Jermaine Johnson is one of those junior college infusions of more speed off the edge and Georgia is going to do more movement up front and Kirby Smart has sent out the memo member or excuse me memo to the defensive staff that we're not going to sit back and wait for people we're going to be aggressive and dictate the terms to an offense well that's something new move the defensive line of scrimmage a little bit more play some games up front and it's not just getting pressure it's having the pressure translate into tackles for loss and turnovers. And Time that's out. what they've been missing. Arkansas State. They were 84th in, 30 seconds. Time out. in sacks per game a year ago. And they're obviously on pace, hasn't, haven't really been tested in that category, but certainly look different now. Yeah, the numbers last season tell the story. Not what you would expect for a Kirby yeah. Smart coach team. And because it, you know who you're chasing, Alabama and potentially Clemson, and they're in the top 10 in all of those categories. In fact, Clemson is number one in most of them a year ago. So that's what, those are the little things that will matter in a big moment. You take the ball away, tackle for loss, get the offense behind the sticks in a, an important time of the game, force a punt, get one more possession. All of those numbers translate into that in a big moment. 31 yard punt. And the Dogs can kneel this one down and celebrate a 3 0 start to their 2019 season with Big Bad Notre Dame coming to town next week under the lights here at Dooley Field. What a scene that will be. And let the party get started as soon as this one ends. be remiss if we did not mention one more time our thoughts and prayers remain with Arkansas State head coach Blake Anderson and the Red Wolves family the passing of his wife Wendy last month after a two-year battle with breast cancer coach thinking about you I know Kirby's saying the same thing right now we wish you the best the rest of the year stay strong dogs win it 650 yards of total offense. They'll pitch a shutout for the first time this season as well. 55 to nothing is the final score. For Kelly Stopper, Lauren Sisler, I'm Roy Philpont saying so long from Athens, GA. Dogs win it. They're 3-0. Notre Dame comes to town next week. For now, we send you back to the studio.